This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. Well, let's dive into it, Patrick. The chart deck is titled, Is the Market Correction Over? With a great big question mark. Listeners, you'll find the download link in your Research Roundup email. Now, if you don't have a Research Roundup email, it means you're not yet registered at macrovoices.com. Just go to the homepage, click the red button that says, Looking for the Downloads. Patrick, is the market correction over? Let's jump to page two, where we have the S&P 500 chart. And that uh, 50-day moving average was a a focal point for us throughout the last six months because it held almost every short-term correction till then. Now, we did have one decisive breakdown day that pretty much right across the board sent signals to all technicians, including those uh, tracking the uh, gamma flip zones for dealers and uh, in the options market and all of the different areas that were the stress points for the market. And that breakdown really kind of opened that floodgate for that 100 plus point down day on an intraday basis. Now we're getting the reflexive snapback. And while certainly these two back-to-back days on the upside are positive on on the very short term, I think the big hurdle and the big tell from the stock market is to come pretty much right off this pivot in the coming day or two. And maybe by Monday or so, we should have clarity on this. The way I look at this is that a a one or two day snapback from an oversold condition is a a typical response of a market. And whether the uh, traders fade this rally or whether or not the bulls build on it is actually the real tell. And I think that sustained price action towards 4,500 would put this correction to bed and probably reopen the upside window. But I I think the jury is still out on that. But what I wanted to do, Eric, was go to page three uh, where we have the Russell 2000. And Juliet mentioned those small caps. And I I really wanted to highlight that while the S&P 500 and NASDAQ were in very pronounced bull runs, that the Russell and the small caps after the of a huge reflation November surge that occurred where the Russell had that great three-month run into February, it's been a six-month trade range for the Russell. And it has not participated. It has uh, got no love throughout the whole period. And it's really interesting idea that this consolidation could be where a new bull breakout happens and maybe even relative strength emerges. I mean, if uh, the idea idea that cyclicals and small caps outperform in this next cycle, it would be uh, interesting to see whether we get a breakout of all of these highs really setting in motion that turn. And uh, what what I wanted to also kind of highlight as a part of that kind of small cap storyline and cyclicals is to touch on page four, particularly on the reopening trades. And uh, to just kind of cherry pick one of the reopening trades is looking at the airlines. Now, of course, so you got hotels, cruise lines, a whole series of different sectors that that are labeled in this reopening trade. But what I thought was really interesting is, is that the airlines, which have been more or less in a market correction since March, also, you know, pretty much going on a six month correction are attempting to break out here. And it's a really interesting question as to whether the trend of the NASDAQ and S&P outperforming in small caps and these reopening trades being the the ones that had the blunt of the selling, will we see the rotation happen where these uh, suddenly get money flow and start performing? I think the, it's a little too early to say this with certainty, but I think this is something uh, really interesting to watch right now. Patrick, let's move on to the Euro-US dollar currency cross on page five. Well, you know, I wanted to touch back on to uh, what Juliet was saying, where she was anticipating potentially the U.S. dollar to fade off of its recent strength. And uh, in my mind, there's only one chart to watch out for this, that obviously the euro USD is uh, on a trade weighted basis, the, uh, the biggest influencer of the dollar index. And uh, what you can see is uh, the euro has been in a very distinct downtrend and it's uh, retesting a, a major support line along its low. And 
And uh, I think that this is where you will see a shift in trend of the U.S. dollar if it was to emerge. And I just highlight how early it is to make a call that the euro is about to rally. But I think, uh, you know, after hearing Juliet kind of discuss her narrative, I think it'll be really interesting to see whether or not this can get back to the 118, 119 level and start to show more of a consolidation pattern in the currency. Because if it does, that could be the basis from which the dollar can uh, start becoming a little more bearish moving forward. Let's move on to my favorite chart, crude oil futures on page six. You know, um, you've been calling this uh, oil move all along, Eric. Uh, but what it, I find really interesting is that we find ourselves at a very key technical overhead resistance. And after a three-day consolidation starting last week into early this week with these uh, breakout candles, this may be the moment where a 52-week high actually occurs and, and we get a legit breakout. And I think that uh, watching what happens here is going to be um, critical. I think this is going to be really interesting to see if uh, technically if we have uh, this breakout, uh, a push up to 78 to $80 on for a short-term target. Target. Obviously, you have a longer-term target, but a shorter-term target to 78.80 becomes uh, very realistic. Patrick, I agree with everything you say, and I think that the ingredients are all in place for this rally now to continue through the rest of the year and into next year. Let's move on, though, to the energy stocks. That's the XLE ETF over on page 7. What I really just wanted to highlight here is that if oil is about to start another bull run, it is still early in the energy stocks to jump onto this and go for a ride. Like we haven't even broken that summer consolidation to the upside from July to August where these energy stocks have been more or less pinned. It'll be interesting to see whether or not if oil breaks out to a 52 week high and this punches to a multi month high out of the August September ranges. I think uh, there's plenty of opportunity to make some money on these energy stocks. It's something that I'm watching with my members as a, uh, as uh, oil is approaching these major highs. Patrick, I agree. And I think what's going on here is that the market is still discounting in the energy stocks. The fact that U.S. production got clobbered pretty bad by Hurricane Ida, that's going to screw things up for some of these companies for a while to come. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the big picture is great big secular rally. Price of oil's going up. It's got to be good for those companies in the long run. So it seems to me like it is an opportunity there. The other opportunity I want to talk about, though, Patrick, is the opportunity for our listeners to check out Big Picture Trading. You're service where you can get a free membership to check out Patrick's service and get Patrick's chart decks not just once a week but every single day. Information's at bigpicturetrading.com or on page eight. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at macrovoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. 
Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna, shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.